And Top Story is brought to you by Vodafone Feather Together. I am Ernest Mina. Tonight, President Ikufuado is caught in the support of the U.S. to what of possible security threats to Ghana, being posed by what he describes as Russian mercenaries mining along the northern borders of Ghana. The president says the Russian Vanga Group, Wagner Group, is being compensated with a mine very close to Ghana's northern border to help the insurgency in Burkina Faso. The president said uh, he was speaking at a meeting with the U.S. Secretary of State, uh, Anthony Blinken, as part of the U.S. Africa Leader Summit, which is happening in Washington, D.C. Uh, let's first understand what is happening there. My colleague, Blessed Sugan, is with our international decks, and he joins me in the studio. Blessed, uh, what is the focus? of the summit and what really is a stake for Africa? Also, well, basically, it's a three-day high-level stakeholder engagement. Um, the U.S. says that it's seeking to foster new partnerships and cooperation with, with uh, its allies across uh, the African continent. And based on that, uh, that's why we're having the U.S. Africa Leader Summit. It's a leader summit because uh, you have uh, African leaders from across 40 different nations on the continent participating uh, in the uh, diplomatic engagements. But what we do know is that uh, the U.S. wants to foster uh, a new economic partnership, which is at the core of the engagement. Uh, we're already getting a pledge from the U.S. government that there will be some 55 billion U.S. US dollars, which will be uh, targeted towards the African continent for the next three years. So it tells you that indeed this engagement cannot be taken lightly. And beyond that as well, there are matters that the US government is seeking to put across to other African nations. Including matters of security. But, but they call it the global priority, shared priorities, as, mm. as they are talking about. Just stay with me in the studio because uh, President Akufwada today, and he addressed the meeting yesterday. Today he had another meeting uh, with Anthony Blinken, uh, Secretary of State of the US, and he raised the issue of security. We'll hear from uh, Anthony Blinken shortly, but the President, in response to a welcome by the U.S. Secretary of State uh, raised the issue of what he said was distressing to Ghana, which is the activities of the group he describes as a Russian mercenaries, the Wagner Group in Burkina Faso. He then goes on to highlight how Ghana's open condemnation of Russia's invasion of Ukraine could heighten the threat of insecurity here in Ghana. Listen. So, Mr. Secretary, Thank you very much. I uh, would we'll thank the American government for the invitation to participate in this summit. I think it's a summit that's been long overdue. I believe it's the second. The last time was, what, over 10 years ago. Yeah, perhaps we should be doing more. But it's, it's, it's good that it has happened. Um, it gives us an opportunity to talk about many common threats and challenges that we have, which we've identified, and particularly for us to be able to put into relief where we are. Yesterday I had an extremely, I was part of an extremely useful meeting with the people from the Congress to come and talk about security matters. I believe that the, Madam, you were there, you were part of the meeting. And um, it's significance for us. And I think that beyond everything, that is a matter that I want to urge upon you. Today, Russian mercenaries are on our northern border. Burkina Faso has now entered into an arrangement uh, to go along with Mali in employing the Wagner forces there. I believe a mine in southern Burkina has been allocated to them as a form of payment for their services. Prime Minister of Burkina Faso in the last 10 days has been in Moscow and to have them operating on our northern border is particularly distressing for us in Ghana. Apart from not uh, accepting the idea of the great powers uh, once again making Africa the theater of operation, we have a particular position that you know about over the Ukraine war, where we have been very, very vocal and upfront about condemning the invasion of Russia, by Russia. And therefore, they're now to have this group in our borders. It's a matter of some considerable disquiet and concern for us. 
So that's the president there expressing concern about the activities of this uh, Russian mercenaries in Burkina Faso and, of course, w their, their activities in Mali as well, uh, which we've seen in the last few weeks. Uh, we've seen some activities, some attacks in uh, Burkina Faso that has led to the escape of many of their citizens, some of them as currently seeking refuge here in Ghana. We'll bring you those details shortly. But the president simply wants an ally in the U.S. to safeguard the peace and security of the country. We really, 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 the themes of that discussion should be the themes that we should continue to address. To what extent we can have you as a partner in confronting these threats. It is very important that ECOWAS and the West African area remains a democratic space. It's the reason for the actions we took over the coup d'etats in Burkina Faso, in Mali, and in Guinea. And ECOWAS has been very consistent in refusing to deal with these governments because of the undemocratic nature of their accession to power. The commitment to democratic values and institutions is a, a, a high priority for our states. We in Ghana have been through all kinds of arrangements, governance arrangements in the past, one party state, all kinds of experiments have taken place. President Kifano there. People are not very clear in their mind. They want to go down the avenue of democratic engagement. And that is why the last 30 years of the Fourth Republic have been the most stable in our country's history. We want to do everything to preserve that. But there are enemies of democracy who are working hard in West Africa today. And therefore, it's important that we bring that matter to your notice and see to what extent we can engage you as a reliable partner in the pushback of, of those forces. There are other areas, of course, of great significance too, the cooperation for economic growth and for the development and for the making of prosperity for our people, which is to some extent part and parcel of the same fight. Because if the young people have things to do, they're not going to be recruits for terrorist forces. So all of that is part and parcel. But specifically, what we can do about the ter terrorist threat in West Africa is now the major security concern of all our states, especially the coastal states that up till now, to the last six months, have been relatively free of this threat. But now on all our common borders of Benin, Togo, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, are these forces that are operating there. And we have to find a way to be able to respond and respond effectively to protect our populations. And that's President Ekufado there. My colleague Blazard Sugai is still with me in the studio. Blazard, uh, before the summit, you sat with the U.S. ambassador to Ghana, and these things came up. If there's any such thing as comparing notes in diplomacy, this could be it. Well, there is, uh, and that's likely the suspicion of what's happening because the U.S. government has held that belief that the Wagner Group is a proxy that's the word the, U the U.S. ambassador to Ghana, Virginia Palmer, has been using. Uh, they believe that the group is a proxy working in favor of the Russian government. And uh, she's been indicating that uh, their presence in Burkina Faso threatens the stability of the entire West Africa sub-region. Is the West or the East a part of the problem? You're being more diplomatic than I will be. I will be direct. Um, I think, you know, the Va Wagner is acting as a proxy for the Russian state. And I think that's dangerous um, for democracy and peace and security in the subregion, uh, and and beyond. Frankly, um, I guess I'll leave it at that. Um, it, it, that's that's not a question of competition um, or a cold war. It's it's a question of a non-state actor acting on behalf of a foreign government, and and not really. I don't think having the interest of those those countries at heart. There's a lot of exploitation of mineral resources and other things involved. What's your take on the <coughs> feeling that democracy is in recession in West Africa and how do we bring it back to life? Yeah, well I think Ghana's leadership frankly in opposing that, that sort of backsliding in the democratic space was incredibly important and I really 
I'm happy to have a chance to publicly salute President Akufo Addo's leadership of ECOWAS um, and trying to keep those countries, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea, on, on track for a democratic transition. Um, and looking at the security situation, and indeed, we all look at Burkina Faso with some trepidation. Um, I also want to salute Ghana's leadership in the Accra Initiative in saying, oh, there's a very serious terrorist threat in the Sahel, and this is in 2017, countries are not paying particular attention to coastal West Africa. So we need to get together to cooperate to ensure our security. And I also want to salute Ghana for acknowledging that it isn't only a kinetic fight. Um, in order to really have good security, communities at risk, particularly those communities on the border, need to feel that the state is protecting them. Um, that, so the security forces, the Ghana Armed Forces and the police, who are respected, um, need to ensure that they honor the human rights of the people that they're protecting. So the professionalization of those services is incredibly important. The other thing that's very important is inclusive economic growth, so that communities in the north and on the border know that they're part of Ghana, know that the Ghanaian Ghanaian state cares about their well-being, that there are health services and security services, education services provided for them. So that if violent extremists come in and say, oh, you're poor, I'll take care of that. Um, they say, well, no, thanks. I don't need that help because I, I, Mother Ghana uh, addresses that for me. And that's the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana, Virginia Palmer, in that interview with my colleague, Blazat Suga. Let's go into the phone lines now and speak to an international relations analyst, Professor Vladimir Chidanso. He's also Director of Academic Affairs at the Ghana Armed Forces Staff Command College. Thank you very much, Prof, for your time here on Top Story. Let me first start with the issue of the nature of the Wagner Group. It appears Ghana seemed to have bought into uh, the statement made by the U.S. Ambassador to Ghana that indeed they are a proxy for the Russian state. Is that safe to assume? Nobody doubts that, that the Wagner group is a proxy for the Russian state. Because if the Russian state didn't want them, they would have stopped them long ago. They are in the Central African Republic, they are in Mozambique, they are in several other countries, especially in the Sahel region. And there is a reason why they are there. They have been accepted by these uh, countries in the, in the region. We must understand what is happening in the context of geopolitics. And we must understand it also in the context of uh, the cold, new Cold War that is unfolding. And therefore, if Ghana is to play a meaningful role, this is not the way to do it by singing the swan song of, say, America. We don't have to do that. Uh, are you what did we say, what did, what did we say when we had the, the uh, Black Water Group? Mm. They were also a proxy. America denied it, and they killed a whole lot of people in Iraq. And, and nobody, in fact, they were a law unto themselves. And up till now, the reports about them when the UN wants to debate it, it is vetoed. So these are the things that are happening within the international political scene. It's geopolitics. And we must understand it that way. Are you suggesting that the comments made by President Ekufuado today uh, brings, to, brings the Cold War, as you suggest, closer to Ghana? It brings it to our doorstep? Somehow, yes. So the four pillars of our foreign policy must guide us. We are, uh, one of the main pillars is Pan-Africanism, anything concerning Africa. We are at the forefront, then uh, good neighborliness, non-alignment, and then multilateralism. And so if we are non-aligned, then we should understand the geopolitics within our area. Something is happening, we must understand. We must, our listeners, uh, we must let our listeners understand. Within the French-speaking countries, we see that there is a gradual divorce of the countries from Francophone or the French kind of uh, hegemony. And it's pronouncing itself very well in Mali. Guinea has followed, and Burkina Faso is following. And if we don't understand these uh, trends, then we may make a mistake by analyzing what is happening. People are calling, uh, talk, talking about democracy and the loss of democracy, democratic deficit, and that uh, the coups meant that we are sliding back. What is democracy? If we understand democracy, then if we see one, then we know one. Do we, did we have democracy in Guinea, in Mali, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Ghana? Do we have, do we have democracy? If we don't have it, then let us not make the mistake of thinking that the ballot can stop the bullet. What was happening in these three countries where we had uh, recent coups, 
is what we call systemic implosion. And the only organization capable of bringing about some level of uh, sanity is the military. So what happened in Mali 2012 up to 2022, the two, three coups that we have had over there, are not conspiratorial coups. These are systemic coups. The system is imploding, and if the military had not stepped in, it would have been worse. In Burkina Faso, it was the same. And the next one just gets up singing the swan song of so-called American democracy. We suspend you, we do this. Instead of looking at the diplomatic way of trying to help them stabilize. The military has stabilized the place a little. The, the insurgents are around. The jihadists are around. And if the French are saying, do this, or sorry, the French hegemony was, was not acceptable to say Mali, for example. So the French left. The EU contingent also left. What do we expect? Mali would not sit aloof. They would want somebody to help. And Wagner Group is a mercenary organization that is ready to supply their, uh, their services. And the Russians will support them. But, but so you, be it as it may, them? Prof, the, the concern about possible escalation and how this could destabilize our system, given all that is happening in, around us, and like you rightly mentioned, in the case of Mali, for instance, you're learning that uh, they're giving them about $10 million to fight terrorists, uh, you know, terrorism there, uh, and the French is leaving, like you said. Burkina Faso has similar aspirations. Does it then back the stance of Ghana and, and, and indeed what President Ekufado did today by openly calling out Russia and asking the U.S. to be an ally to safeguard our borders? Wrong. Rather, we bring in the U.S. as an ally. We have taken a stand. You understand? But the Wagner Group is a mercenary organization, just like the U.S. was paying Blackwater to do the dirty job for them. So the Wagner Group, yes, will be paid, just like... And they are they having successes within those countries. The Wagner Group is not a group that is extending, uh, what do you call it, their activities to countries that have not invited them. Anybody who tells me that the Wagner Group will destabilize Ghana cannot convince me that this is the case. The Wagner Group is in those countries that have invited them and they are just doing business. They are just being supported by the, the Russian government. Prof, and we need to study the matrix of this before we open our mouths. Mm. Prof, kindly hold the line for me. Peter Tobo right. is a member of the ranking uh, of the of the Interior and Defence Committee of Parliament, and he right. joins us on the line with his thoughts on this. Uh, Mr. Tobo, what, what do you read into uh, the posture of the president today and the statements that he's made calling on the U.S. to help Ghana uh, as far as this security threat is concerned and the activities of these Russian mercenaries in our board, uh, along our borders? Already we have some citizens who are seeking refuge refuge in Ghana. We understand many of them in the Sisala and the Boku area because of the issues happening there. Shouldn't we go all out? Thank you very much. Let me say thank you for the opportunity. I'm good evening to Professor Vladimir and Judanso. It's been a while I have to look for him. Ernest, we are really in deep waters. His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, has stepped out of the way to violate Ghana's standing principles that govern our international relations. Professor Vladimir Antutansu just made very clear. Non-alignment is one of our key pillars. If His Excellency the President in 2016 could go out there and tell people that there's nothing wrong with bringing mercenaries to help train his personal security guard, today, what moral right does he have to go condemning another mercenary group that has been invited uh, by Mr. Tobo, I I'm not sure he said they were mercenaries, and it's not been Listen. established if they indeed are. You, are you talking about the 2061? Yes, indeed. I think that if you go to Ghana, it is, it is there clear that there was nothing wrong with inviting this master to come and train his people. But that is not, that is just by the way. Let me say that, you see, great power's desire to have influence over Africa has been a game for many centuries. America, China, Russia, as we talk today, it is just a game. And if we are non aligned, I expect that the president should be careful with his word because the Wagner Group is not a group that go invading countries. They were invited, and they've gone in there. They have a role to play to ensure that the invitee or the person who invited them will achieve that security principle that they want to achieve. So whatever we do as a country, let's respect our own principles. We are non-aligned. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah many years ago knew that a time was going to come and going to be like this. He talked about the Africa standby force. Africa should have the capacity to solve its own problems. 
I am sure that if the Africa standby force was established and as strong as we speak, we should be finding the Africa standby force in Mali. We should find them in Central Africa Republic. We should find them in Guinea. We should find them in Burkina Faso. And Africa will provide a solution to those African brothers and sisters. But here we are. We are so weak. And they are just playing games with that. Just like Prof is saying. Why does somebody turn and they use a proxy to achieve what they want to do? That one is not a problem. If it is America, it's not a problem. If it is Russia, it's not a problem to the Russians. But they will always have a way to paint the picture to make the other look bad. But those of us who are in Africa, vulnerable countries like Ghana, in terms of security, our policy is non-aligned, and we expect that the president will put that poster out there and not openly condemn Russia that they have invaded Ukraine. Uh, but but Mr. Tobu, the, the security situation is also very much economic in nature. And at this summit, we are seeking to build stronger ties with the U.S. There's a lot of economic um, benefit for us um, once once we we agree to some of you know the, the conditions that may come up at this summit. Isn't the president simply being pragmatic? Um, <laughs> as far as the condition in which we are is concerned, getting an ally who would not just help you with your security situation, but also with the economic benefits that comes with it. I am sure that the non-aligned position that have created a better posture for the president than the, 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 the hardliner position they are taking against one party. The fact is that if you are looking at the economy alone and you are looking at economic relationship between Ghana and America, you will gradually create an insecurity. And with the security, nothing economic will have benefit for this country. Let's assume that you bring a clash between America and Russia in Ghana, that America and Russia begin to fight about Ghana's position whatever benefit you will get in terms of economic benefit will have no value in the country because without security, we can't have development. Professor Entridan, so just about a month ago, we launched uh, what we call the Social Cohesion Project uh, with our neighboring countries. It was supposed to be a $150 million uh, investment in security infrastructure, also to help fight terrorism within the sub-region. Uh, it's seeing all that is going on at the summit today and the pronouncement by our president, do you see this program uh, being affected by Ghana's position today? Well, it looks as though we are uh, with cup in hand saying we cannot do anything about our security. The Wagner group is the red flag if you don't come in. Uh, and I find that very, very intriguing. I mean, come to think of it, are we saying we, we, we are unable to put our security in our own hands like Peter is saying, that if we have a West African standby force or an African standby force, we will not be able to stem the tide of these terrorists or that kind of thing. The main thing is this, that if you look at the theme for the uh, leadership summit. It's a little uh, insulting and a little um, disgraceful. Why is that? Because it was clear that they were going to tell our leaders what to do. They said they were, and it's clear, it's all over the net, that they are afraid of Russian, China influence in Africa. That's ridiculous. America should know how to compete rather than stampeding us to, to play their roulette for them. Come on, China since 2010 has outstripped America. In fact, by 2010, China was able to invest over 200 billion in Africa, China alone. And that is investment, and that is trade, and that is, yes, invest, trade and investment. Why is America afraid to, stamp, uh, to, to, to um, uh, compete? And rather telling Africans, be careful of uh, China, be careful of Russia. I mean, where is the democracy? Why don't we have a choice? And uh, France is telling the French-speaking countries what to do. And that is the crux of the matter, and that is what we should understand. If we don't understand these things and we are only rushing in China-Africa Forum, and then we rush in the uh, Francophone, the Quires, the was last year or so, we had the French-Africa Forum. And our leaders were being told what to do. Again, America is telling us what to do. And we are lapping their ass by giving them all the promises about threats from Russia and that kind of thing. I mean, this is ridiculous to me. If you uh, listen to Kagame, was it last week or two? He was castigating African leaders for just rushing to summits where they are being told what to do. When have we had an African summit about our own development? When can we have African leaders having a summit telling themselves what to do for our own development and our own security? But then we rush to America, Africa Leaders Forum. So our leaders go there and promise them, hey, look, do you see the Chinese coming? 
do you see the Russians coming? And we, we lap onto their, their whims and caprices. I don't think we need America to be able to have our own spirit. Well, let's see how this pans out. The summit is still underway, and we've made efforts to reach out to government for some more on this. Unfortunately, we had no one to speak to us. Uh, once we do, we'll bring you some more insights into this. That's it for Top Story, brought to you by Vodafone. Further together, Newsnight is up next after these.